All right, thank you guys. Welcome to our Major League Baseball video here today for Monday, April 4th. Man, why do I keep wanting to say that? April 12th. I've said April 14th for like the last four days straight. But anyway, Monday, April 12th, my name is Brock Page and I do sports picks for free right here on YouTube. Despite another kind of pretty rough day yesterday, we're still 4-2 and two in our last six board member tier package picks on my Patreon website. We're also hitting at 63%, our last $16.99 daily best plays on that Patreon page as well. We currently have over 1,275 members who are signed up and active on that site. And if you want to see which one of these YouTube picks, well, actually, to be honest with you, <laughs> I don't have any Major League Baseball action here today on Patreon, but we will tomorrow in our MLB tier package play. And if you want to see what that is, uh, patreon.com slash Brock Page, that's the website. But anyway, guys, uh, let's go ahead and dive into it. The Padres take on the Pirates, 635 Eastern first pitch in the Steel City. The San Diego Padres are minus 220, total 7.5 juice to the over. And if you like the Pirates in an upset at home, they're plus $1.90 on the money line. Trevor Cahill is the expected starter on the mound here for Pittsburgh. You Darvish on the bump for San Diego. Now, Darvish punched out 13 batters already through two starts. He's also walked just two batters, and he currently has a 1.22 whip. The Pods are currently undefeated on the road this year, and they actually lead the majors in runs allowed. They're giving up just 2.3 runs per contest. Meanwhile, the Pirates on the other side of things are in the bottom 10 in the league in scoring on, uh, in scoring on average per game, and they also average double-digit strikeouts at the plate per game as well. The Pirates have won just three of nine to start the season, and their pitching staff is giving up nearly six runs a game. Trevor Cahill struggled in his Pirates debut. He gave up seven runs in just four innings of work against Cincinnati. Now, total-wise, I'm really not sure if Pittsburgh scores enough to help put this one over. They also saw two out of their last three ball games at PNC Park stay under the total. Meanwhile, the Padres are 80% to the under through 10 ball games themselves. I'm going to lean toward the San Diego Padres minus one and a half and the under seven and a half runs. Real tight window there. All right, next matchup. It is going to be Mariners versus the Orioles, 7.05 Eastern start time. The Baltimore Orioles are minus $1.20, totals eight and a half flat. Dean Kramer for the O's, Justice Sheffield for Seattle. Now, the Mariners are on a two-game winning streak, three months straight up in their last four ball games as well. Seattle's in the top 10 in road hits, and they're led by Ty France, who's batting 324 with a homer and four ribbies. Meanwhile, veteran Kyle Seegers hit two bombs on the season himself, eight RBI, and a 543 slugging percentage. They're taking on a Baltimore club who's on a three-game losing streak, and they gave up 27 total runs in those defeats. They also, uh, all those uh, runs and losses came in the form of a three-game sweep to the Boston Red Sox. Now, Baltimore's pitching staff is struggling. They're giving up nearly six runs a game, and they're allowing almost double-digit hits per contest as well. Dean Kramer's last start lasted only three innings. He's officially 0-1 with a 9-0-0 ERA and a 3.00 whip. Now, total-wise, the Orioles are 3-0 to the over at Camden Yards. Seattle's 6-3 to the over for the entire season. I'm going to lean toward the Seattle Mariners plus a dollar in the over eight and a half runs. Next ball game, it is going to be Yankees versus the Blue Jays, 7.07 Eastern first pitch. The New York Yankees are minus $2, totals nine. Garrett Cole for the Yankees, Robbie Ray for Toronto. Now, Ray's making his first start of the 2021 season. Had a really strong spring training, 2-0 with a 198 ERA and 18 strikeouts. The Blue Jays are in the top 10 and fewest runs allowed per contest. Toronto's also in the top 10 and fewest walks given up. They're taking on a Yankee club who lost three out of their last four ball games. And they've somewhat struggled at the plate. The Yankees are currently in the bottom 10 in the hits per contest on the road. When it comes to the number in this one, New York 6-3 to the under through nine ball games. Toronto saw six out of their last nine stay under the line themselves. I'm going to lean toward 
The Toronto Blue Jays plus one and a half in the under nine runs. Next contest, it is going to be Rangers versus the Rays, 710 Eastern start time. The Tampa Bay Rays are also minus 200, total seven and a half. Tyler Glass now for the Rays, Dane Dunning for the Rangers. Despite a real solid season debut, we're looking at a Ranger club who's been shut out in two out of their last three ball games. Now, Texas is in the bottom 10 in scoring on average per contest. They're also striking out nearly 11 times a game. They're taking on a very dominant Tyler Glass now, who struck out 15 batters in 12 innings of work. Now, Glass now currently has a .75 ERA through two starts, along with a .58 whip. Despite some problems in the early going here, the Tampa pitching staff is in the top 10 in fewest walks allowed. Now, when it comes to the scoring in this one, seven out of Tampa's last nine ball games did get over the posted total. Meanwhile, the Rangers are 3-0 to the over as the official road team. I'm going to lean toward the Tampa Bay Rays minus one and a half in the over seven and a half runs. The next contest it is going to be Phillies versus the Mets, 7:10 Eastern Standard Time. The New York Mets are minus a dollar 35, numbers eight and a half. David Peterson for the Mets, Chase Anderson for the Fightins. Despite getting the L in his debut, Anderson comes into this contest with a 3.60 ERA and a .80 WHIP. The Phillies are also in the top ten in walks allowed. They're taking on a Mets squad who lost two out of their last three. And they scored only five total runs during that span. Now, the Mets are in the bottom five in the majors in scoring. They also average just 7.2 hits per contest. David Peterson's also 0-1 officially on the season, losing to the Phillies in his season debut. Peterson's officially got a 13.50 ERA and a 2.25 whip. Now, total-wise, not sure if the Mets are going to be able to hit enough to help put this one over. They're also 2-0 to the under at City Field. I'm going to lean toward the underdog Philadelphia Phillies plus a buck 15 and the under 8.5. Next contest, it is going to be Marlins versus the Braves, 720 Eastern start. The Atlanta Braves are minus 135, totals 8.5. Wasker Enoa for the Braves, Sandy Alcantara for Miami. Now the Marlins have lost four out of their last five ball games. Bottom three in the league in scoring on average per contest. The Marlins are putting just three runners across the plate per game as well. As good as Alcantara's been, Alcantara, as good as he's been in two starts this year, he's officially 0-1. He's yet to record a win. He's taking on a powerful Braves lineup who's in the top five in home scoring. Atlanta took two of three from Philadelphia in their home season opener, and they averaged 10 hits a game against a pretty good Philadelphia pitching staff. Now, Ronald Acuna is batting 444 with four homers and a 1.378 OPS. Out of Acuna's 16 hits on the season, nine of them went for extra bases. Meanwhile, Travis Darno is eight for 30 with a pair of doubles and four RBI. When it comes to the total in this one, the Braves allowed just four runs or less in three out of their last four ball games. Meanwhile, the Marlins... Are 2-0 to the under away from home, 6-2 to the under overall for the season. I'm going to lean toward the Atlanta, <laughs> what are they called? The Atlanta who? I'm going to lean toward the Atlanta Braves minus 135 and the under 8.5. Next ball game, it is going to be Cubs Brewers 740 East. The Milwaukee Brewers are minus $1.35, numbers 8.5 flat. Freddie Peralta for the Brewers. Albert Alzale for Chicago. Now, Alzale is 0-1 with a 7-2-0 ERA through five innings of work. The Cubbies, I'll, I don't know how really to say it any other uh, uh, away here. The, the Cubbies, they've been playing quite poorly. They're on a two-game losing streak, and they also dropped four out of their last five. Chicago's main problem is hitting. They're dead last in hits on average per contest. Consequently, Bottom three in scoring on average per contest as well. The Cubbies are averaging just 2.3 runs per contest on the road. They're taking on a Milwaukee squad who's on a two-game winning streak themselves. Four months straight up in their last five. And despite the potential absence of Yelich and Shaw, we're still looking at a Milwaukee team who 
really thrives by their play in the field, at least in the early going here. They're in the top five in fewest hits allowed per contest. They're also giving up just 3.6 runs per game. Freddie Peralta is yet to give up an earned run this season. He's also punched out 14 batters in just seven innings of work. Now, total-wise, Milwaukee saw five out of their last nine stay under the total. Chicago's gone 7-2 and two to the under in their last nine themselves. Give me the Milwaukee Brewers, minus $1.35, and the under 8.5. Next contest, Nationals, Cardinals, 745 Eastern first pitch. The St. Louis Cards are minus 145, totals 8.5, juice to the over. John Gant for the Cards, Eric Fetty for Washington. Now, Fetty gave up five runs in less than two innings of work in his season debut. The Nats have yet to win a game on the road this season, and they currently find themselves in the middle of a five-game losing streak. I'll tell you what, the Nationals start really slow every year. I mean, we're talking like, what, the last three or four years. Uh, they just start incredibly slow in the first month of the season. Now, the Nationals are dead last offensively in runs per nine, dead last in offensive walks per nine as well. This Nationals lineup is scoring less than 2.9 runs a game. They're taking on a Cardinals club who won four out of their last six themselves. Now, the Cardinals are in the top 10 in scoring, and they're led by Nolan Arenado, who's got a dozen hits thus far in the season, along with a pair of homers. Arenado is currently batting 333 with 20 total bases and a 556 slugging percentage. Meanwhile, Yadier Molina is batting 367 himself with seven ribbies and a 962 OPS. The Cards are just one game back of the Reds for first in the NL Central. When it comes to the total, St. Louis did see two out of their last three contests at Bush Stadium get over the line, or should I say New Bush Stadium. They're also 6-3 and three to the over in their last nine at any location. Meanwhile, Washington saw three out of their last six get over the posted total themselves. I'm going to lean toward the St. Louis Cardinals, minus 145, and the over 8.5. Next ballgame, Tigers, Astros, 8-10 Eastern start. The Houston Astros are minus 220, numbers 9. Zach Greinke for Houston, Casey Mize for Detroit. Regardless of a pretty good season debut for Mize, this Detroit organization, they've been in shambles for quite some time now. Uh, past couple of seasons, just showing no promise. It's, it's really sad, but anyway, they're currently on a four-game losing streak this year. And they also dropped six out of their last seven. Now, the Tigers have still yet to win a road game, and they're also dead last in the league in road hits. Detroit averages just 4.3 hits per contest as the away team. That's terrible. Now, they're taking on a Houston club who's been pounding the baseball, complete opposite of Detroit. They're in the top three in the majors and runs, top three in hits. Jose Altuve leads the club in hits, and he's currently batting 351. Meanwhile, Carlos Correa has hit a pair of homers along with, an, uh, with a 983 OPS and 21 total bases as well. Zach Granke's also got himself a 138 ERA through 13 innings along with a .69 whip. Now, total-wise, Houston could very well put this one over themselves, especially if they can get to this Detroit bullpen. Six out of the Astros' last nine ball games got over the total. Meanwhile, Detroit's given up 16 total runs in their last couple of outings themselves. I'm going to lean toward the Houston Astros minus one and a half in the over nine. Next ball game, Indians, White Sox, 8, 10 p.m. East. The Chicago White Sox are minus $1.30. Totals eight and a half juice to the under. Carlos Radon for Chicago. Tristan McKenzie for Cleveland. The Cleveland Indians are on a four-game winning streak. Five and one straight up in their last six. Now, their pitchers currently lead the bigs in fewest hits allowed per contest. They're holding uh, opposing batters to less than 5.2 hits per game. The Indians are also allowing just 2.7 runs a game as well. Tristan McKenzie struck out five batters in under four innings of work thus far. He's taking on a Chicago team who lost two out of their last three. And they average less than 6.91 hits per contest in their last 10 meetings with Cleveland. Timmy Anderson still on the IL for Chicago with a hammy problem. When it comes to the scoring in this one, Chicago's 2-0 to the under at home. Cleveland saw two out of their last three road games. 
stay under the line themselves. The Indians are also 75% to the under for the entire season. I'm going to lean toward the underdog Cleveland Indians plus a buck 10 and the under eight and a half. Next contest, still in that eight o'clock slate there. I'm talking about the Angels versus the Royals, 8-10 Eastern first pitch. The Los Angeles Angels are minus 115, totals nine. Alex Cobb for LA, Brady Singer for Kansas City. Springer's officially 0-1 with a 13.50 ERA through just over three innings of work. He's also walked three batters this season as well. The Royals have lost two out of their last three ball games, and they rank dead last in walks given up. The Kansas City pitchers are giving up over 5.2 free passes a game. Meanwhile, offensively, the Royals are striking out more than 10.5 times at the plate per game as well. They're taking on an Angels squad who won two out of their last three road games. Six and three straight up overall for the season. LA's been hitting the ball very well. They're in the top 10 in scoring, top 10 in hits. Of course, Mike Trout, he leads the club in hits, homers, and total bases. Trout's hit three bombs along with 10 walks, 24 total bases. Trout's also got an OPS of 1.392. Meanwhile, Shohei Otani... And Jared Walsh, they each have uh, well, they each have three home runs apiece themselves. Walsh uh, has a 1.274 OPS himself. Now, total wise, four out of LA's last six ball games got over the total of nine runs. Two out of their last three road games got over the official posted total as well. I'm going to lean toward the Los Angeles Angels minus a dollar fifteen and the over nine runs. Next ball game, A's D-backs, 940 Eastern start time. The Oakland A's are minus $1.30, numbers 9.5, juice to the under. Chris Bassett for the A's, Madison Bumgarner for Arizona. Despite a pretty uncharacteristic start of the season for Mad Bum, the D-backs are currently on a two-game winning streak, and they've officially won two out of their last three home games. Now, Arizona's actually in the top five in home scoring, they're led by Eduardo Escobar, who's jacked four home runs along with eight RBI. Now, Escobar could be, you know, problematic for Oakland pitcher Chris Bassett. The righty's already 0-2 thus far in the season with a 5.56 ERA and a 1.41 whip. Oakland's winning just 30% of their ball games this year, and they've really struggled at the plate. Oakland's in the bottom three in hits per contest, bottom five in scoring. The A's are averaging just 3.2 runs per contest. And speaking of the scoring, when it comes to the total, Oakland's gone 60% to the over for the entire season. Arizona saw two out of their last three get over the line themselves. I'm going to lean toward the underdog Arizona Diamondbacks plus $1.10 and the over 9.5. With that, guys, we're going to dive into our next and final matchup of the show. It is going to be Reds versus the Giants, 945 East. The San Francisco Giants are minus a buck 20, totals eight and a half. Aaron Sanchez for the Giants, Wade Miley for Cincinnati. Now, Miley threw six scoreless innings in his season debut. He's officially 1 0 in the year with six strikeouts and a .50 whip. The Reds are currently in first place in the NL Central, and they lead the majors in scoring. Since he's also averaging double digit hits per contest, Nick Castellanos has hit four home runs along with 28 total bases and a 1.116 OPS. Meanwhile, Tyler Naquin leads the majors in home runs with five of them. Naquin's the team leader in RBI with 14 of them as well, and he's got a 1.195 OPS. They're taking on a San Francisco team who, despite a pretty good start here, they really struggle to get runners on base. San Fran is in the bottom five in hits per contest, and they average only 3.4 runs a game. Now, total-wise, San Francisco is 3-0 to the under at Oracle Park, 7-2 to the under through nine total ball games. Meanwhile, since his most recent outing with Arizona stayed under the total uh, of, uh, what is it? What's the total? Uh, stayed under the total of eight and a half runs. Yikes. Uh, I'm going to lean toward the Cincinnati Reds plus a dollar and the under eight and a half. With that, guys, we're going to hop into our quick pick recap powered to you by my Patreon website. I like San Diego, minus one and a half, under seven and a half. 
Seattle plus a dollar over eight and a hook. Toronto plus one and a half under nine runs. Tampa Bay minus one and a half over seven and a half. Philadelphia plus a buck 15 under eight and a half. Atlanta minus 135 under eight and a hook. Milwaukee minus 135 under eight and a half. St. Louis minus 145 over eight and a hook. Houston minus one and a half over nine runs. Cleveland plus a buck 10 under eight and a half. Uh, LA Angels minus a dollar 15 over nine runs. Arizona plus a buck 10 over nine and a half. And before I give you my next and final free pick for the video, one final reminder that we are four and two in our last six board member tier package plays on my Patreon website. We're also hitting at 63% in our last $16.99 daily best plays on that Patreon page as well. Give me the Cincinnati Reds plus a dollar and the under eight and a half. And with that, guys, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on Patreon. If you guys end up signing up for a package here today on Patreon, just keep in mind, we're going to bill you the day you sign up and then the first of every month following that. So if you end up getting a membership here today, you're going to get access to that content all the way through the end of April. But most importantly, guys, got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. Really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. With that said, happy Monday to you, best of luck to you, and I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website at patreon.com slash brockpage.